So for those of you that don't know who we are, we've been around for about 20 years, um, founded by a gentleman in California by the name of Fred Luddy. And when he actually founded the company, his whole objective and his vision was to ensure that people like you and me, ordinary people that do our jobs every day, that we could do it easier and more efficiently. So, uh, <clears throat> this is who we've become 20 years later. Nine billion in revenue, over 8,000 clients, 24,000, is it 20, 26,000 actually employees. Um, we spend 25% of our budget on R&D. And we have over, of those 8,100 clients, 1,500 clients actually use us for risk management. And it was interesting to hear the regulator talk about IT security and cyber risk because that's where a lot of clients actually start using us from. So we'll talk a little bit about that. But what do we actually do? The way I describe it is we're an intelligent digital workflow platform. So if you think about the various functions in your organization, you look at this bottom row here, a lot of organizations use what we call various systems of record. So each of your functions will have purchased maybe an SAP or an Oracle or Workday or a success factors, et cetera. The challenge in a digital world, those systems don't talk to each other. They have different data models. So in a digital world, what we have to do is we basically digitize those different functions and we take their processes and put them in the platform. And in those processes, they connect up to those systems of record. So that when events happen or action needs to be taken, we know what to do. So a very, very simple example is think about you hire a new employee and all the functions that need to know about bringing on a new employee. It's not just the HR team who obviously has to obtain the contract and obviously set up their payroll records. The facilities team needs to know about it. Does this person need a desk? Depending on what that person's role is, compliance might need to know because maybe they're in the trading room. Maybe they're giving advice to clients. So we need to know, do they actually have the certifications to be able to do that kind of work? Okay. Then also, as the manager, I need to say what systems do they need access to? And historically, the way all that happens is we transfer paper back and forth. This information gets downloaded into Excel, and then we go into committee meetings, we share information, et cetera. So we're actually now helping clients reimagine how you might run your governance program across the enterprise now by using intelligent workflows. And I'll talk to you in a minute about what does intelligent workflows actually mean. So first of all, in terms of market trends, maybe some of these won't be surprising to you, but this actually came up, I think, in Craig's talk about kind of enterprise resilience and being fueled by the macro trends and actually regulatory pressure. Obviously, since the post-pandemic, post clients are now thinking more and more about the resilience of their business because, as it was said earlier, we don't know what the next event is going to be. There's also cost-cutting and vendor consolidation, and we see this happening quite frequently now. Clients are looking at all their applications and thinking about how can we consolidate this down into one or two, make things more efficient, so that the organization becomes more agile. And it's not just about agility, but it's also about cost-cutting. And then the next thing is, how do we transform digitally? From an operational risk perspective, how can we enable the organization to be more dynamic? And given the rise in cyber attacks, for, you know, if you've been reading some of the latest surveys, it's still the number one risk that the chief risk officer has to think about, the organization has to think about. So how do we help the organization, how do we protect our employees and our clients and our assets? How do we enable our employees to serve the customer better? How do we enable them to give them a better sense of, of what, what, they're, what they need from us as an organization? So how do we embed the controls into the workflow so that we can simplify and compliance and enable the employees to make better decisions? And then finally, it's all about regulation as well. You'll see more and more of it's coming up. So <clears throat> as we'll see here, 
This is the amount of regulation just in the space of resilience that's been created in the past three years from all over the world. So um, how do we actually define that? And I'm just going to use the UK's um, definition here. When, this when they introduced the regulation in March of 2021, I had the opportunity to actually meet with the regulator at the Bank of England. And I said to him, I said, you know, after reading this regulation, I actually think this could apply to indie in any industry. And he, I said, is, was, what do you think of that? Do you think that's appropriate? And he said, Anna, what organization does not want to be resilient? And that is so true. And this is what we are learning from our customers that leverage technology, leverage platform, is they now believe they have competitive advantage. So how does that actually happen? To be able to deliver operational resilience and I can have competitive advantage. So the first thing that <clears throat> is that you have to understand operational resilience is not a product. You don't go buy a piece of business continuity software and say, oh, we're operationally resilient. It's an outcome. But in order to get to that outcome, you it is best if you leverage technology. Because as our speakers said earlier today, change is too rapid. People can't keep up with that, not with the complexities of an enterprise. So how do organizations actually come about to leverage um, the technology? So what we observe in terms of how companies are approaching this is the board and the exco, the management team of the organization, actually determine what are their critical businesses? What are the most important business services that they need to ensure that they are delivering to the community and there cannot be disruption to that delivery? We need to understand what is the risk appetite and the risk tolerance level associated with those businesses. And then we want to then understand what assets are required to deliver that service and be able to deliver that level of risk, um, stay within the <coughs> confines of the risk appetite and the risk tolerance that we've defined. So those assets are technology, it's third parties, it's our people, it's facilities, and of course it is data. But underpinning, underpinning all of that technology is your governance program. It is the compliance, the controls that you have associated with running that important business service that um, <clears throat> can actually deliver the, what you're looking for. And so thus, embedded intelligence is the ability to be able to embed your governance, your risk, your controls into the workflow of the organization such that you direct your colleagues to do the right thing. This frees up your organization from having to chase people for evidence, having to ensure that they actually got the right piece of paper, that they made the right decision. So let me um, take you into an actual case study, because I think it's kind of the best way for me to kind of translate what is actually going on here. So we're going to talk about um, fraud event processing, and we're in, what I'm going to show you here is client experience how we're actually engaging the compliance team and what are we doing to actually mitigate the risk of potential um, fraud getting out of control in this payments business. So we've got five personas here. So we have the COO, Amelia. She's actually um, one, of, you know, one of the businesses that she's responsible for is their payments business. You, then you have your customer, Fiona. We're gonna have John. He's the dispute agent who's going to receive the complaint from Fiona. John's only been on the job one week, by the way. Then you're going to have John's manager, who's Ashley. And then you're going to have our corporate compliance leader, Elaine. Okay? So, what is Amelia actually having to deal with? Probably of no surprise to you, she has limited budget. <laughs> so, so, but the regulation continues to grow. Um, and it's expanding. But the team has a number of, of innovation ideas that they want to actually emulate, in, implement this year so that they can actually continue to expand their market share. 
The challenge for Amelia is that it takes her weeks to get reports from the risk and compliance teams. And the reason is because they sit in separate functions or, or separate teams and they have different processes. And so the complexity of trying to pull that together to give her an accurate test or an accurate picture is difficult. Now, Amelia actually observed the ServiceNow platform being used by the HR organization. And she began to see how efficient they were able to make not only the onboarding of an employee, but the whole journey of the employee with the organization and the offboarding process as well. As many of you know, the offboarding, particularly in financial institutions, is pretty critical. So she thought, let me, let me kind of check this out and see if this is something we can uh, leverage. So, but let's take a scenario where we've got Fiona, she's actually reviewing her bank account and she notices that there's some unusually high charges against her account that she doesn't recognize. So this company, eServices Limited, so she decides to raise a dispute, okay? So she completes all the information, et cetera. So there she's got a case, uh, a case number. Um, she knows it's been sent off to the bank. She can see that it's high priority. Um, and she sees what product that it's actually associated with. Now, John, as I mentioned earlier, he's only been on the job one week. So he needs to um, actually take this case and he's got to do some investigative work. So it's quite complex what he needs to do, but there's a playbook that's been built in here telling him what are the steps that have to be taken. And so you can see here that it starts with um, the actual compliance letter that has to go back to the client saying that we're looking into your case. Okay? So the next thing that happens is he's going to, whoops, he's going to ask his boss Ashley to kind of check out what he's doing. Is, is, is everything I'm doing correct? So she looks at, you know, the process here and she can see there's a manual investigation. And then she can see that there's a case and it's actually been summarized using AI. So she doesn't have to go through and read all these notes to put everything together. It actually tells her, this is the issue you've got. These are the actions that have been taken. So, <clears throat> Simultaneously, our compliance manager has received an alert as well. And Elaine, you know, who obviously is ensuring that the compliance program that the organization has implemented, that she actually monitors using controls embedded in the workflow, she un begins to understand which one of the controls are breaking or which issues have been raised against that particular citation in the regulation. And so she will have been alerted to the size of that fraud because it broke a particular control. And she go down and she, you know, she's reviewing this information, et cetera. And she can see that there is something wrong. Um, so there's been a critical failure because the indicator has issued, indicated that there's been a, a sizable claim. Now, in this particular example, we've set this at 250,000. Of course, you can, you know, use your own imagination, as we talked about earlier, in terms of, okay, if we have processes in our organization, how could we leverage this, right? So you can see that she's actually gone through it and she's saying back to the dispute team leader, actually, you've got some things you need to do here. So first of all, you need to advise the merchant not to pay on this. Okay, so Ashley reviews that and she's now got to tell John, who's been on the job for a week, that because this is considered counterfeit fraud, you need to advise the merchant that we're not gonna be paying on this particular transaction. Right. And the other, the other thing, as you can see here, she starts to look at this unauthorized charge. She realizes as well, she needs to create a risk event. Now that risk event gets raised, it's gonna go up and it's gonna be sent to the head of the payments group and they're gonna have it on their dashboard. The head of compliance has got it on their dashboard. The head of the risk business has got it on their dashboard, as well as obviously 
from a fraud perspective, she's actually uh, raised this and now she knows all the tasks that she needs to do as it relates to that particular event. Simultaneously, the compliance manager has said, you know what, I gotta sit down with the head of the payments business and tell them what's going on because we've got 19 failed controls and we've got seven bags. And this is what's happening across their technology function. You can see there in terms of the, um, the technology pillar is saying that these are 15 issues related to this particular process and the business, and then we've got issues related to facilities as well as third-party suppliers. So I need to bring this to the attention of the head of the business, and let's figure out what we're going to do in terms of putting a working group together potentially around this. But in the meantime, what I would like is that the person that's this particular team leader, um, that have her actually complete a risk assessment so we actually understand what we're working with here. So she goes through and she completes this form, and then uh, that obviously gets tracked. Now, everything that's happening here, audit teams are gonna love, <laughs> right? Because there it is, you've got it all validated. They're gonna say, well, how did you do this? And what did you do that? And when did you do that? Et cetera, et cetera. And obviously when the regulator says, you know, when you, know, you need to report this within 72 hours, you obviously have the audit trail to show what you did in order to report that in 72 hours, a particular infraction. So the final thing is that the COO realizes that we've got some problems here with this particular payments business, part of the payments business, the dispute prod process. And so thus she now need, realizes we have to start a project around this. And so thus she then puts that into the project, the program board list of projects. And this is something that, that she will be working on with her GRC team. So that's just a very simple example of how we've taken various silos across an enterprise and brought it together to execute on one particular process. I'll leave it to your imagination in terms of other things that you would like to do. Um, but that is the NOW platform and that is what ServiceNow helps our clients with. <laughs>